Hi guys, Jill Blanchett with Green Thumb Stampers here. Today I'm going to do a video to show you how to make these cool sidestep cards with the paper pumpkin kit. I'll give you all the details and I wanted to call out Suzanne Nets and Annette Brown Boisvert for their inspiration for these cards. Alright, I'm going to show you how to make the card base. This is what it will look like when you're done. You're going to start with the A2 base, which is a half a piece of paper. So we're going to cut this paper off at five and a half. And we're good to go. First off, you're going to want to score or cut from two and one quarter down to seven and one quarter. So with my handy dandy new paper trimmer, I'm going to put this in there, put my paper back in there, and I'm going to put it, line it up at two and a quarter because I want it also in at two and a quarter. Hope that makes sense. So then I'm going to take my blade down two and a quarter, push it down and pull it down to seven and a quarter. Now I've made the cut. So I started down at two and a quarter and I started in at two and a quarter and then I pulled my blade down to seven and a quarter. So now I'm going to turn my paper. Oh, we want to say counterclockwise and I'm going to score the first score at two and a quarter so it would be right where the top of the line starts so actually I'll use the new scoring tool that comes with the this paper trimmer and not my bone folder so I'm going to pull my scoring tool down to my cut line at two and a quarter. I don't think that was snapped in there. And then I'm going to move it up to four and a quarter and I'm going to score half or the whole card because this is where it's going to fold. So I've scored at four and a quarter. Now you're going to move it up an inch. So you move it up to five and a quarter and score up to that cut line. Then you're going to move it to six and a quarter Uh, right there on the new trimmer and pull down to that cut line and then the final one is at seven and a quarter and you'll pull down to that cut line so here you've got it all scored and then on my sample here you'll see I have M V M V M and over here an M that's showing you I've wrote down here mountain folds and valley folds. A mountain fold goes up, a valley fold goes down. So here we go. We got a mountain fold and a valley and a mountain and a valley. And the side here is a mountain. So after you get it all cut and scored, it will look like that. You could see I went over too far. So if, if you feel more comfortable, you could use your bone folder and drag it through the... Okay, our next step is going to be to start the layering process with all the papers. So you're going to need one of the envelopes, half of the trees, you'll need a card base, and then we'll use some black, probably half a sheet would be enough, and you just need one little strip of pool party. What you're going to do, oh, we can add some birds, maybe some snowflakes when we're done. We'll see how it looks and see if we actually need those or not. Um, here is another sample that I made. I 
have redone my measurements several times, so so sorry. Uh, you could hopefully see what I wrote there. If not, message me and I'll get you the actual directions better copy of this. So on this side, you're going to want a 2 and 1 eighth in, 1 eighth inch by 4 and 1 eighth inch piece of black. And then a two inch by four inch piece of the inside of the envelope. Let me stick that down real quick so you see it as we're building it. Down on the lower portion, you'll need a three and one eighth inch by one and one eighth inch black piece. Oh, I put that on the door. Um, you probably could make that one a little bigger if you wanted. But then you'll need a 3 inch by 1 inch piece of pool party. And that's going to go right down here. Then you're going to take your card. For this sample, I've got another idea I'm going to show you um, that I found out after... Um, I started this, and I will find out the gal's name and give her credit. Um, she, I had an aha moment, and I totally came up with another way to do this with this. So what I did for initially was cut out the trees, but you'll want a black piece at 4 by 2 and 7 eighths, and then you'll cut the trees out at 3 and 7 eighths by 2 and 3 quarters. So... It goes, you'll see pretty close up to the, the trees, so you could just start cutting from the sides and the top and the bottom till you've got it um, spaced how you'd like it. Put that on there real quick so you can see. And they're going to go on there like that. These, no paper, because you're, you're not going to see them. We're going to finish those off with some, like, decorations. So that's what you're going to have. We'll put the the branches and stuff on as we decorate further. But I just wanted to show you this as it's coming together. So for anybody who gets nervous like I do when it comes to measuring with all the little one eighths and three eighths and whatnot, I'll see if I could show you. I can't see my i got to get you in focus. These are the little lines that you need to worry about. Oh, there we are. So, like, the big lines, those are one-eighths. So when I say one and an eighth, you want to go to here. Or seven-eighths goes to here. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... And then if you're working in sixteenths, for some reason, you go to the little ones and then count each line. One, two, three, four, five. So that always kind of flusters me when I get into the little tiny measurements. So I just want to give you a quick show of those. But this is where we're at, at now. We've got our pieces assembled, stuck on, and we'll keep decorating from there. Okay, the beauty of the pause button. I went and I moved all those pieces over to the original card base that I made for you guys. So I just wanted to show you a couple things. When you put this guy on the back, make sure you don't glue up on this side or it'll stick down. You only want to put the adhesive part way up so that it just sticks in this little panel so that when you fold it up and when you're doing your measuring it, it you don't want it to be any higher than the f four and a quarter that the card is or it won't fit in your envelope so that's why we cut this tree down and we've mounted it way down to the bottom and it's all about keeping keeping it even across the top there so 
this is where we are now. Opens up. And we'll continue on with the rest of the assembly. So now what I've done to finish it off is I stamped in the background with white craft ink with the snow stamp. I cut a half an inch strip out of the um, envelope and then I made a little flag and what you do is you can make a little dot right there and you snip and snip with your scissors to make the flag part. I'm going to stick that down. I added a couple birds and some snowflakes. I did trim off the, the bottom. You can see how I trimmed off the bottom part and a little bit off the side of the trees and then I cut the top off so that it fit in in this space and that's done for this card I will show you what I did to jazz it up a little bit okay now for the alternate card that I'm going to try and show you I'm going to use the stitched rectangles dies instead of cutting them out so that we're going to be able to use this the rest of this card we're not going to waste it so um, this is a little bit smaller than the last one I'm cutting off some of the tree but in order to get it to fit up and down on the um, the back I'll get this one on the back piece I had to cut it in um, on this back one here I had to cut it in a little bit um, smaller on the frames to be able to use that one so I got the black background ready to go and then I got the I washi tape down the rectangle so let's see if I can get it to cut out okay I had to pause that because that was really ugly so I got those cut out in there then I'm just gonna pop them out and there goes my catalog on the floor because I got too much stuff piling up over here move that carefully now we've got a card the card front so I may try and move this over a smidge and make it a bigger hole or I may end up just covering the front of this and the back of this we'll see I'll maybe I'll show you guys what I end up doing there but um, we've now got this ready to go on our second card and I'm going to do the same thing with the sentiment section I'm going to cut out two rectangles and put those put those down in the um, space so I will do that offline and then I will show you the finished product but um, these two pieces here I'm going to also use the rectangle dies so let me finish that up and then I'll show it to you finally it's done so what I did then was you'll see, maybe you can see the stitch dies there the only weird thing is now these aren't stitched but it preserved this card for me to use for something else I guess if I had just a plain rectangle I could have done that or I could have make shifted this into something smaller but this is a different version I used some of the shimmery crystal effects and put that in different spots on the trees just to give it a, a different effect as well so there's just two different versions same card different kind of different supplies oh my gosh you guys I totally forgot to show to put the boughs and the pine cone and the ribbon on so I'm back for just a quick minute want to show you that I used the beautiful bows, bow, bows, dies and I cut out some of the envelope and some of the sparkly I didn't tell you guys that this is sparkly and so I used that for a pine cone and some other greenery and then I stuck that on the front so those are the finished cards that was all <laughs>